Barbara is the daughter of my dear sister, Margaret. Both my parents were killed in a car accident five years ago. Uncle Alfred's been supporting me ever since. You have. So, secrets, Al? Secrets are a virtual prerequisite in this house. Don't you think so? I'm on break from... Oxbridge Academy, Alfred's alma mater. Uh, the new computer sciences division. How'd you know? It says so on the patch on your sweater. everybody and welcome to generation loss the show where me and jeremy watch movies um i'm bryn that's jeremy and what today up? we have a guest called uh will menneker hello will you thank you will? for joining us thank you for um we we i feel like you were the first person we might have asked to be on the show uh because we had just started it when you guys released the um the good times. Uh, what was it? The good oh, times. Oh, the party for the the good times at the Iowa State Fair uh, short film. Yes, we told you about it, and we were all very drunk, and we talked about doing this episode. <laughs> yeah, we talked. Yeah, well, no, I, I, the, I, I stuck <laughs> with my original movie recommendation to do, and I gotta say, I was a little worried about it when I was watching it. I was just like, oh, I chose this movie because I thought it would be hilarious, and then like I was worried it would be one of those movies that like you watch and you're like, this is just bad. It's like not really funny, mm-hmm. but holy shit. <laughs> it was still so funny and like I, I i enjoyed it so much more than when i saw it for the first and only time previous to this <laughs> in the movie theater i also saw it in the movie theater okay wait. i came, <laughs> I, came out of the, I came out of the theater like so angry so angry when i first saw this but uh I, no, it, it I gotta say, it really does hold up in in a certain way. It All really, right, well, really be- does. Before we get to that, yeah, <laughs> what are we watching this week, boys? What have we seen? Yeah, what did what did we watch? Will Jeremy, you want to go first, Jeremy? What did you do? Uh, well, mine's mine's not going to be um, super exciting because what happened was uh, I spoke to a friend of the show, Alex Patak, and yeah. he was watching Out of Shadows for his podcast, uh, Pod oh. America, and. Uh, <laughs> just talking to him about it uh for whatever reason uh because of my uh particular mental sickness uh prompted me to just watch it again you watched it again <laughs> so i just watched <laughs> the whole thing again <laughs> so will do you know what out of shadows is oh, it sounds familiar but remind me of it's what the it is. youtube QAnon documentary <laughs> it is the okay. uh, the absolute I, phenom tell me more. tearing tell me more. up the charts tearing up the youtube charts it has like something like 15 or 16 million views now. Um, and it yeah. keeps getting taken down. And essentially the, my mother sent it to me, which is how I found out about it. Yeah. She was like, you should watch this. Cause you're always talking about how the media shouldn't be trusted. And I was like, yeah, specifically but when I say the, yeah, when we say the media shouldn't be trusted, I'm also specifically referring to people on YouTube. Anyone on YouTube. <laughs> Should also just because it's alternative or independent media, uh, right. doesn't mean it should be um, also trusted. Yeah, including yeah, no, us. out of the shadows. <laughs> out of shadows. Like- so it's um, it's a it's created by a stuntman, a Hollywood stuntman who suffers a great fall, hits his head, and uh, his suddenly back. believes in QAnon and and <laughs> satanic cults and stuff. Wow, this is like a this is a Phineas Gage situation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's cool, though, because, like, for the first hour of the movie, it's like, so the CIA did Paperclip and Mockingbird and all this, like, true stuff that, like, this is why you shouldn't trust the government. And I was like, okay, I'm in. And then it's like, and also, they all worship the devil. (laughs) And I was like, all right. You you, you still haven't said anything that's not true, so I don't... I I mean, I'm I'm actually, yeah, I'm I'm wide awake to this movie now. It sounds like... um, it sounds like uh, what loose change would be if it if it wasn't true. Very much, exactly. yeah. It's um, it's it's in the spirit of loose change, but much much worse. Um, <laughs> it's not nearly as entertaining as loose change, nor as compelling. The guy is kind of like the the tumble at the beginning is kind of key to this because it just is very scatterbrained and insane. Right. It really loses the plot that like towards the end of the movie, the last 15 minutes of the movie is this woman who you've probably heard of if you've listened to like the QAnon anonymous podcast. Yeah, what is her or name? Um, what is, like, um, Liz Cronkin? That's yep, it. That's the one. Yeah. It, it, oh, oh, 
it, we got Kronk in the house. Kronk in the dark. All right, I'm watching, I'm watching this tonight. So but. it's like the last 15 minutes are just the Kronk show. And oh, it's just like God, she that, just starts oh, being God, like, great. Okay, Another woman now who that suffered we've... major brain damage. <laughs> This is before she started taking like hydrochloroxine or whatever that shit yes. is. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> I love hydrochloroquine. I really hydrochloroquine. Just wanna... Yeah, it, it's great. <laughs> everyone, everyone should. We should get a check from Trump and then like a little vial of it. They just be like, bottoms up, everybody. Yeah, I'm dropping just doing it in fucking my eyes. Mid-show <laughs> ad reads for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, Batman and Robin reminds me of. <laughs> Speaking of poppers, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our uh, sponsor this week is Hydrochloroquine, <laughs> um, the quarantine queen. <laughs> the uh, the other thing that I watched the trailer for um, Batman versus Robin. Oh yeah, you mentioned Ooh. this to me, but I, do you mean the cartoon from two thousand five? Yeah. Oh, I guess okay. it's from two thousand five. So it's I was looking for uh, Batman and Robin to you know to stream, and I came across Batman versus Robin, which is a um, I guess an animated Batman movie that they released at some point. Um, mm-hmm. And so there's this like amazing scene, and and the the trailer is literally just an uncut scene of uh bruce wayne taking a woman home and they're like in his study oh she's like so i guess we're gonna go to bed aren't we and he's like first i need to show you my model trains what (laughs) he literally shows her a model train set i was just gonna say uh out of all of the, the the bat vehicles in the bat universe i don't think batman has ever had a bat train he should though but he oh, really, has he, he really i'm looking should. it up yeah. i'm fucking looking <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm sorry i think it's from 2015 it's a cartoon yeah yes oh there is a bat train okay hell okay. yeah <laughs> yeah apparently that movie is based on batman the court of owls it's got a bunch of owls in it for some reason damn uh i don't know why that exists but it's an official dc uh um official dc movie yeah well they it's made like, a lot like of those. batman finally meets his match in uh, owl man you know in terms of like sort of <laughs> nocturnal uh flying animals yeah that are, like yeah, the night owl sort of predators night and, owl um, who's yeah, a cool owl. guy yeah, yeah. Th- well, after watching the movie that we watched, I started thinking a lot about Watchmen because at the end of this movie, they play the Smashing Pumpkins song that they wrote for it called The End is the Beginning is the End. Mm. <laughs> that, that was the height of Billy Corkin's um, yeah, oh, yeah. songwriting ability. <laughs> and then there was also on the B side of that single, a version of the movie that was slow called The Beginning is the End is the Beginning. And wait, are you, wait, they are used you that. You are you telling me that there was a chopped and screwed version of a Smashing yes. Pumpkin song on the soundtrack <laughs> to Batman and Robin? No, no, it was on the sound. The the fast one was on the soundtrack to Batman and Robin, and then the chopped and screwed version is on the trailer, the first trailer for Zack Snyder's Watchmen. What? Wow! <laughs> and I remember seeing the trailer for Watchmen in the theater and being like, "Oh, that's clever." <laughs> that's very funny. Especially all because I remember, the, the, all I remember about the music from Zack Snyder's Watchmen was the uh, single worst use of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah oh, ever, yeah. <laughs> ever put to like any creative endeavor. But also, it doesn't it have Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower or the regular. Yeah. All no, along? it is uh, Jimi Hendrix's All Along the Jimi Watchtower. Hendrix's All Along the Watchtower. Um, yeah, when they're flying up to the to the North to Pole Ozymandias or whatever. Yeah. Is, uh, uh, no, the 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 main thing I remember about the Watchmen soundtrack is that it's just like laden with dad rock like every oh, single yeah. thing on it is just like some dad rock jam oh now it's all it's all flooding back to me because now i remember at the comedian's funeral they play, literally play the sounds of silence the sound uh-huh. of silence by yep. simon and garfunkel <laughs> oh wow they do and it was do like they, they, i swear to god like i don't think he did it but zach snyder really missed a beat in the scene where like the sort of uh colossus sized dr manhattan is like mm-hmm. nuking south vietnam they should have had a credence song in yeah. That scene, in no, that scene. they did. Um, they should have had "Run Through the Jungle" or "Fortunate they should, Son." Or they should have like had that. "Fortunate Son" because yeah. it would have yeah. been the best use of it possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they literally did "Fly to the Valkyries" there, right? <laughs> did Probably. they really? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, I'm actually oh my God. fairly confident that's what they played there. <laughs> that's terrible, because I feel like one the thing about Watchmen is that it's it's. He doesn't bring anything good to it. Zack Snyder doesn't oh, no. understand yeah. the movie yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. But the he he's so slavishly tied to the original material that I think it still ends up a good movie. 
That's my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it no, exactly it's, once. <laughs> it's it, 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 yeah, it's 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 a weird movie because it couldn't be like in terms of like the look and and other than like I think one major change like the the actual plot like it hues so closely to the source material. Right. But the intention behind it could not be any more different from <laughs> the book. You know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a very yeah it's a very it's an interesting uh, film adaptation for that reason so I think it's pretty cool because it's still like they're all still terrible people the director right. just doesn't understand that exactly which yeah. kind of makes it better <laughs> <laughs> like there's it's all earnest yeah well and he doesn't understand that like the you know the the, the watchmen like the the heroes aren't supposed to be cool. And so right. all of these fights are so cool and stylish and you're like, no, it's supposed to look like shit. Right, but he's such a <laughs> but he's such a dipshit that they end up looking shitty anyway. Like the night owl is like a weird asshole. Right. And it's like he doesn't understand that, but because he's kind of a weird asshole, it's like even more so. I like it. Yeah, but I'm still, gonna rewatch it. The night owl is still <laughs> he's like a chubby middle aged dude, but he still like punches a dude's arm in half. Right. They like have like Which an X ray on it, I feel like. Can you see his arm break? <laughs> <laughs> he loves violence. He does. Uh, so the thing I watched this week, because I didn't watch a movie, and I'm sorry, but the reason I didn't watch a movie was because I started rewatching Seinfeld from the beginning. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> um, Interesting. I've never done. I mean, I grew up with Seinfeld. Um, like, I watched it. I watched it constantly um, on... I watched it while it was airing. Like, it was like mm-hmm. a fam- And then, of course, like, in syndication. And then in on, syndication. You know, TV every night, uh, like, 7 or 7.30. Right, but almost none of the episodes from the first two seasons are in syndication. Oh, my God, no. Like, you almost you almost never see them on sy- in syndication. Right. Like, it, it, and, it's, and when you do, they seem, like, odd. Yeah. They so seem I, completely out of place for, like, what you think of when you think of, like, classic <laughs> Seinfeld. Yeah, so I'm in the second season now, and... Uh, it's great. I mean, lots of people have pointed it out, but it's so weird seeing people our age in the 90s in New York have the exact same lives. Like, they're just, like, a little richer. Yeah. Or probably a lot richer. Like, Costanza is, like, a, a real estate agent. So he's just, like, one of the guys who's, like, showing apartments. <laughs> George has approximately 10,000 jobs over the course of that show. And mm-hmm. my other favorite detail about Seinfeld is someone actually tallied it up. And, like, the you know, the, the joke about George is that he's, like, you know – a put upon loser and constantly rejected by women. Yeah. He dated something like 70 different women over the course of that show. <laughs> over the course of George nine Kostanza years. was just, yeah, like a, a five star pimp. He was just, he was, <laughs> just what an absolute guy. He it's slaying. unbelievable. He was yeah. laying pipe all over. He was laying pipe like Con Edison all over Manhattan. <laughs> like, what do you think works for him? Because he's, he's objectively of the crew, like of the inner circle. He's the least attractive of them. That's what they, no, this is like, this is like our lives now. Like it's just every, every girl on Twitter dates a guy like George Costanza. It's now. true. And, like, no, and, and tweets the, about it. That's like, why oh, they like, all tweet about yeah, it. Yeah. My, my, my boyfriend eats in bed and like, <laughs> like while we have sex or whatever. And it's just, it's just, yeah, these sort of confessional tweets about all the Costanzas <laughs> that they're dating or have dated in the past. But it's so crazy because in the past, you know, as I was watching it as a kid, it at, like nothing made any sense or just like this very surreal show about weird people making weird decisions and now that i'm in my 30s it's just like oh i know all these people and they fucking talk about it constantly on twitter it's a great show now and it's still funny yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it holds up magnificently even, even better in, in hindsight because yeah I, I remember when i was yeah i remember i always liked seinfeld but i always thought it was funny but you're right. Like when you watch that, like as a kid, like after school or whatever, it's just like, oh, like th- this is sort of like a stab at like this is what adults think are funny, but I, but like you don't get why right. like all the shit about their awful jobs and like like you know lives and like dating and parents and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's very opaque to you as a kid. You don't quite under. Yes, you're right. It seems surreal. It seems like absurdist that well, like, like all, all the in the first season, his parents are just like staying in his apartment, and so he has like a fold out couch. And I remember being like, "Why are his parents asleep in his living room? Like, what the fuck does this mean? How is this? It feels like a dream when you're a kid, but now you're just like living that because it's like, where else are they gonna stay? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Should we get a hotel? We're gonna get a hotel." <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. It's really strange. It's a weird feeling. It's like it's like rewatching one of the dreams that you had as a kid and everything making more sense. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, of course, the alligator is eating the beach ball. That makes sense. Yeah, just yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's right. That represents my horrible parents. <laughs> yeah, dreams are a, yeah, dreams are a way that like your future self unconsciously casts message to yourself like in the past. I kind and you of can really make believe sense that. of it, like you know when you when you're when you're living your waking life catches up to the dream life mm-hmm. but, but it, hopefully by then the dreams i'm having now are like the the, the dreams that my dead self is uh, giving <laughs> me so I, that's why i don't remember them anymore because they don't exist <laughs> they're in the minus land yeah <laughs> uh well what well what did you watch this week Okay, um, I'm just going to run down. I, I got my letterbox queued up here. Let's, oh, hell yeah. Let's go down the list. Here we go. So you've been doing uh, a lot. We've got, oh, yeah. I got, we've got uh, Hour of the Wolf. Classic. Ooh, uh, fantastic. Berg, Bergman. 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 Like, this is just, it's it's an art film, but it's a tight 90. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's like, and I watch like a movie about Swedish people staring at each other in black and white so I can give myself permission to watch a Van Damme movie later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you're uh, a, you're still a snob even in quarantine. Like you're holding yourself to. Well, okay. A... I mean, I'm, yeah, you, you'll see you'll see the way that my my, the, my taste sort of uh, <laughs> go here. So next up, we got Mikey and Nikki. That's the Elaine May uh, sort of like uh, shaggy dog gangster story with uh, John Cassavetes and Peter Falk. Who directed uh, this that? Is a very, uh, Elaine May. Okay. And I don't this know. is sort of a very kind of like a like a proto like uncut gems like like two guy like two two guys and they're sort of like shaggy dog fuck up like n- like nighttime odyssey through philadelphia <laughs> okay um then next up we have uh, another classic the red shoes by uh oh. Powell and, and press pressburger mm-hmm. and then yeah okay sure I'm, I'm a snob up until the ronald emmerich godzilla hell remake, yes <laughs> which was um abominable that- <laughs> it was it was it was horrible <laughs> Um, is but, that with but, Brian Cranston? No, 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 oh, no, no. The, 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 oh, the, the Matthew Broderick. Broderick. That, yes, no, this is Matthew the one Broderick. with. Um, this is the Matthew Broderick. Yes, yeah, the Matthew area. Broderick one. Hell yes. This, this is this is this is like. Some, <laughs> I, I, I was like I, I was inspired to do this because like someone someone tweeted about this week and they said that like okay you're Ronald Emmerich you've just done Independence Day like the big like one of the biggest summer blockbusters of all time yeah you can do whatever you want you're gonna do Godzilla. I'm like, what's the cast that you asked for? Like, you can ask anyone. And you're like, get me Matthew Broderick, Hank Hank Azaria, and Harry Shearer. Two guys from The Simpsons are lead roles in the Godzilla remake. God damn. And then the other lead is Jean Reno. (laughs) What? Why? He plays a French secret agent. It is a baffling movie. But it was like the cast, this was sort of like interestingly uh, funny. And then mm. the movie itself was just one of those like weird like n- that that '90s era of like disaster movies where they all you got to see Manhattan destroyed yeah. over and over again in yeah. ways that really seem like 9/11 in retrospect. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that they <laughs> yeah. weren't priming us for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then like I, the the last one I'll give you is actually like this is my I I just saw this the other night and. I'd never seen it before, but this is my actual like five bags of popcorn, like a plus, like run, don't walk recommendation. Okay, it's it's Peter Bogdanovich's first movie. It's Paper called Tar- it's it's called Targets. Oh yeah, have you, have you guys ever heard of it or seen it? I, I saw not. it. Yeah. Okay, it is incredible. And you, I watched this movie, and like n- no disrespect to him, I'm like this is not a knock on him or the movie, but holy shit, Quentin Tarantino stole everything in once upon a time in hollywood from this movie mm. like almost everything like it's just like it is it, it's a it's it's basically it's about um boris karloff plays like an aging horror actor base he's playing himself essentially uh-huh. who's trying to retire from movies because it's like it's sort of like he feels a, like a sort of a relic in the new hollywood and he just feels a little out of place and he's like it's time to you know, call it, you know, just it's, it's time for me to, to bow out. Like, yeah. it's not fun for me anymore to do this. And it's this, and Peter Bogdanovich basically also plays himself as the director who was trying to pitch him on his next script. And it's this very sort of charming, poignant story, like meta narrative about like show business and like an act, Boris Karloff playing himself in what would be, I think, his last serious dramatic role. All of it juxtaposed with a truly chilling and prescient portrait of a mass shooter. And like the day leading up to this like horrific mash, like 
like mass shooting that oh, he carries yeah. off. And it's like, it's like him and Boris Karloff's life just sort of go on this kind of collision course over two days in Hollywood. Mm. And like, there are so many little details from it that like, are that you, you can see Quentin Tarantino just plucked right out of it. Like there's a lot of really amazing stuff about like, um, the like background noise of uh, car radios and TV mm. shows that are on in the background that like really texture so much of the movie. And then like, it's just everything about this weird kind of like this confrontation between old Hollywood and then this like slow burning, but like inevitable, like uh, the counter, uh, like sort of parallel narrative right. leading up to this like really horrific and act of violence. It's a, it's a really fantastic and interesting movie. It's like, it, it, it's really just beautifully shot. The the performance of the guy who plays the, 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 the killer, like the shooter guy is genuinely like unnerving and weird. And it's like, it, it's very uncanny. It's like, it's, it's for a movie made in like 1968. It feels like really modern and contemporary, certainly in its portrayal of like, you know, American mass murder, but um, it just a, a really like an entertaining and fascinating movie that I cannot recommend highly enough. Yeah. I remember we, uh, my, the Dean at my school, School, the college I went to was Peter Bogdanovich. <laughs> and oh, so wow. we watched a bunch <laughs> of his movies. Oh, uh, nice. You can do that when you're the dean. <laughs> uh, well, we, he, they showed Paper Moon um, when, oh, he, nice. when he like became the dean. Because there was like three deans as I went, as I, through the four years I was there. Um, and he was the last one before I graduated. How and long they did watched, he stay? I don't know. I, Seems I like graduated. You, probably tough to pin him down. <laughs> I'm just imagining like... It's like, you know, you're there for class and like they, the substitute teacher wheels in the TV and you're like, oh, last picture show again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we had fucking a th- theater and shit, but they, yeah. they were like, oh, probably Peter Bogdanovich, classic, Paper Moon. But then we watched uh, like this and, you know, uh, um, last picture show and shit. And I really liked this one way better. Um, I didn't really, I, it's during the period where I was watching so many movies that I didn't like differentiate between them. <laughs> I was like, that was good. And then I immediately forgot about it. But that's interesting. I never thought about it in like the hindsight of like mass shooting. No, it's like, it, like we rewatch it again, like having seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and like the, 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 the similarities between the two of them are like really instructive. Like you, you can see, really see where Tarantino got like sort of the idea for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then like mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff in it is like really, it's it, the, the, targets is such a template for it it's re- and again like you know that's no 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 smoke to once upon a time or tarantino i mean i, I really enjoyed that movie but you like um, that movie like even of- even after reading chaos <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it's like it's like it's 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 the what if chaos never happened yeah history, you know what it's, if- like, it's a more hopeful vision of, of of reality you know that like hopefully through art we can we can we can change reality through experiencing art which changes the past. That, that's my theory of uh, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> what if through art we could kick Bruce Lee's ass? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Target's, uh, I remember it being really good. I'm excited to rewatch it. Because I it, love, like, there's, a, there's a period, and I was trying to describe this when we talked about My Cousin Vinny. There's like a period <laughs> of movie, like 60s and 70s especially, where it was like people were doing these really experimental but like incredibly tight like yeah. thoughtful well acted well scripted movies that like just don't get made hardly ever yeah. anymore and yeah, I, targets was produced by roger corman so it was like out of yeah. that like that school of filmmaking where it was like really shoestring budget but like they had a really like oh god uh, laszlo kovacs is the cinematographer so it has this really like amazing look to it and it's just like nice a, like it's both this, like I said, like this really interesting uh, meta commentary on show business, and like the, like it, like it, you know, it was filmed and takes place during like the same year that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is supposed to take place yeah. in. It's like the contemporary version of that. Wow, and it's, it's in sixty nine. Yeah, or sixty eight. I think when the movie yeah. came oh, out. Okay. It's like the same general era, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's kind of the same plot. It's like a sort of aging actor who feels like you know Hollywood has kind of passed him by, and he's like he's he's past the peak of what was once like could have been a great career. And it's this kind of charming, poignant look at that. And then like, but yeah, like I said, it's just all like, um, like, like paired with this, like really, even by today's standards, like very shocking and disturbing, uh, like act like this, this, this thriller about like an act of mass murder. It's awesome. Does it have that same sense of like, like the impending change that, that Hollywood had where it's like 
kind of like it, the it, the feeling of like like he like Dalton knows throughout the movie that like his time is up because the thing is changing, but he also is yeah. aging and also you know this big event's about to happen. Yeah, like it's it's definitely there, and it's like it's it's in the screenplay. I mean, like that's why Karloff's character is retiring. He's like you know like this is for for young people. Like it's 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 a it's like a young person's game now. Like nobody wants to see movies anymore where I play this sort of like. Uh, Victorian gothic heavy guy he's in a <laughs> castle like no one he's like no one's scared by that anymore because and then he references like a, a shooting in the paper and then of course like you know obviously it's unspoken but Vietnam and right. just like the general like you know dark turn of American culture he's like no one's scared about like from by Frankenstein anymore essentially like yeah. this, this old kind of you know gothic horror do you get of, like, like little glimpses of his career too yeah, you do. They no, they, they it's it's amazing. They show clips from movies that Karloff was in, like uh, Howard Hawks's uh, The Criminal Code. Oh, like and, real like, ones. It, it's just like, and then like there's a movie like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There's a movie within a movie that you see, like the last movie that the Karloff character did before he says he's retiring, mm-hmm. is like a Roger Corman, uh, Edgar Allan Poe sort of style movie that stars Jack Nicholson, <laughs> the actual Jack what? Nicholson. <laughs> yes. Jack Nicholson shows up in a very small role in in the movie, but like as the lead cat, like the sort of hero, romantic wow. lead of the movie within a movie, starring the Boris Karloff character that you see at the very beginning and very end what? of Target. <laughs> so prescient, and and also also am- amazingly, the movie starts like in the movie within a movie, so you think you're watching that movie, and then you uh-huh. realize you're in a a screening room, and one of the very first scenes in the movie is a really young Jack Nicholson smashing through a door with an axe what <laughs> yes it is, there's, a, there's so many layers in this movie there's so many so many mythic resonances going on here that sounds way better than hollywood <laughs> um so did you like uh, hour of the wolf yeah I, I, yeah that was really good i fucking love <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that a lot it's just sort of like yeah it's um it's Liv Ullman just sort of like wide eyed and terrified. And then it's just like, you know, existentialism and like, you know, uh, you know, fear of repressed sexuality or, you know, sort of the creative impulse to uh, death or something. I, I don't know. I'm not saying like I could, I, I, I got it totally, <laughs> but I could see, I really did like it. And you could see like a lot of the touches that influence like David Lynch and stuff like that. Oh, for sure. It's a great movie. Jeremy, have you never, have you ever seen any no. Bergman? Oh, okay. No, we've talked about this before. I've, uh, it's one of those ones that like, I keep meaning to eventually get around to, and then it, it, I and never it, do. If, if, if you're looking to get around to it, like it's an easy lift because it's like I said, a tight ninety. Mm. Right. Yes, it's very it easy. Swedish. Pe- it's Swedish people staring at each other in black and white, but it's like you know, it it, it goes down smooth. But also, wolves, werewolves. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the movie. Yeah, let's get into fucking Batman. Right, yeah, I got, Robin. I got a lot of notes on this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I figure we should start a little early. So this week we watched Joel Schumacher's 1997 masterpiece, the final, the final <laughs> nail in the that. coffin, <laughs> <laughs> the final nail in the coffin of superhero movies. Yeah, uh, no, none were made after this. Uh, <laughs> Batman and Robin. You know, I think it was sort of the final nail of that '90s era of superhero yeah. superhero movies. Yeah, and like it was, of that era, like sure. Batman was really the only one. It was Batman, or like I don't know, like characters that they invented just for a movie. They weren't based yeah, on like, like uh, or, blank, blank, man. You know, blank man, blank man, <laughs> me- meteor man, um, <laughs> the Rocketeer. I guess that was already a character, but yeah, you know, it was just not one was that anyone it? was familiar with. Maybe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And, but like Batman was the biggest one, and like the the, and there was the previous, yeah, it's, and like but like the previous Joel Schumacher Batman movie was like very well liked and successful, Batman Forever, right? Mm-hmm. And it was like, uh, I mean, I'd be interested to watch that one too. But I just feel like with this one, it was the death knell for Batman as a cinematic property until or any superhero until Christopher Nolan essentially, and and the, the, and then like the. The contrast between this movie and then the Christopher Nolan Batman or Zack Snyder Batman is so funny because, like, this is, I think, honestly, like, uh, just a tribute to like the Adam West TV series. This yeah. is like if someone gave you a hundred million dollars to recreate the Adam West Batman movie, right, right? This is what it would be like. But I just think like he just like Joel Schumacher just dialed the camp button up 
a couple notches too high. Right. And it's like not that it's not really that much more ridiculous than Batman Forever was. But this <laughs> one, it was just a few degrees past the point of like what people um, it, it just everyone's mind balked at this one. Right. It was so I have unbelievably uh, ludicrous. I have a counter argument. <laughs> Uh, okay. which is that anyway. I actually think that the dial between Batman Forever and Batman and Robin is at exactly the same point. The problem with Batman and Robin is that he also dialed up the sincerity knob too much. Yes. Because the problem with this is that <laughs> like Batman Forever, is, we should have done this the way that we'd initially talked about doing, which was to do them both. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you have to talk about You have about to talk them about both. them both. But the thing with Batman Forever is that you have campy ass two face you have campy ass riddler and then you have none of this like alfred is dying you know we're <laughs> mad at each other because well, we can't yeah. we can't about... decide who gets poison ivy <laughs> yes no, they're, they're mad at each other because poison ivy uh this is the only move she has as a villain is just blowing her horniness dust on people <laughs> She just blows. She just blows sex pollen on people, and like that's the only thing she does as a villain. And she yeah. like kind of and can poison you. All right, let's. Oh, let's yeah, yeah, you point, yeah, Let's do the. Uh, yeah, let's quick do recap. a quick run recap. The recap of the movie is Batman and Robin are a superhero team. Mister Freeze is a bad guy, and he's trying to steal a big fat fucking diamond. Uh, Poison Ivy is a normal um, nerd girl who works in a lab. Uh, her weird um, war criminal scientist boss uh, is trying to sell us. Uh, uh, by the way, p- played by the great John Glover. Yeah, you may yeah. remember from such films as Daniel Clamp in the masterpiece Gremlins Two. <laughs> yeah, yes. no, he's, yeah. I was like, I was just thinking, like, in the beginning of this movie, it, it, it opens. Okay, first of all, the opening shot of the movie. Are like nipple, like nipples, but they start and with pieces. that, they which is the climax that, but, in the last movie. But, exactly, but it opens with the cod piece and the nipple clamps and yeah. the leather. But from then on, I was a little disappointed in how not gay the movie was. Yeah, right. Like it, it could have been a lot, lot gayer. It's extremely I was that, hetero. It's just, yes, it, it's campy, but it's not gay. No, so like it's it's missing it's it's missing it's it's missing something there. But like I just like to say like. Within the first ten minutes of this movie, uh, Batman and Robin uh, fight a hockey team in a museum. <laughs> uh, Batman, yeah. and this is the moment when I remember seeing it in theaters. Within like the first two minutes of the movie, where like even my like adolescent brain just like turned off and was like, "Nope, this sucks." <laughs> it was when Batman slides down the spine of a dinosaur that's been frozen, like in like exactly, fucking Fred Flintstone. Like Fred, Fred Flintstone in the <laughs> opening sequence of the Flintstone. He like. A, it's like they blow the whistle and then Batman just bloop, he slides down a dinosaur's <laughs> spine. Yeah. Um, and then and then him and Robin also have skates in their bat suits. Mm-hmm. They click their heels together and skates comes out. Yeah. The um, one time they're ever using it. <laughs> well, uh, and Arnold, the- Arnold drops about five to six temperature and ice related puns. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 try, I tried to record as many of them as I could because it just like obviously Arnold's thing has always been the one liner. But the writers in this movie were like, w- let's just push it. Like and by the end of it, he's just saying things with the word cold. In yeah, it. Like, there's no joke. You could tell there's that no joke you could tell all. the screenwriters were as they were going, they were not stopping to write these because they're like, yeah. well, let's get more story. You know, let's get more story out there and then we'll come back for these. So they all just say pun here. And then at some yeah. point they finished writing and they went back and they were like, that's a lot of blank spots. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the, the, too many. <laughs> the, the, see, like, okay, like the, the first ice related pun he does in the beginning of the movie, he goes, the ice man cometh. And I'm like, okay, right, you know, sure, sort, yeah. of a, sort of a reference to something there. It's and an then he goes, yeah. Uh, what killed the dinosaurs? The ice age. <laughs> um, and, then, and, then, and then it turns out that he has a spaceship and then wings. And this is in the first ten minutes of the movie, and then it just cuts, and we're in South America, and uh, like like Poison Ivy and a mad scientist is selling. Uh, first of all, they turn a pr- they, the the Bane Venom bimbo fies a prisoner by giving them like sort of huge jugs yeah. and muscles, and then like he's, he's auctioning off Bane to like Gaddafi or something. Right. There's a there's a lineup of different. I guess like world leaders and one is like he calls them the ununited nation. Yeah, uh and <laughs> okay. like your wretchedness so like and like all sorts of that type of shit. And 
it looks like Castro is there. Yeah, Castro's and, yeah. there. Uh, somebody from Saudi Arabia. Just some just African like, guy in traditional <laughs> yeah. African garb. <laughs> and then like three white dudes who are like slightly different hair colors yeah. and facials. But yeah, so he's trying to sell the super soldier serum to world leaders. And she's like accidentally sees it and is like, I can't believe you. And he's like, well, you're going to have to die. And so he tries to kill her and turns her into poison ivy. She kills him. Yeah. That's how she also important ivy. notable here is that uh, the, the South American, I don't remember if we said this, but the South American lab that they're making super soldier serum in is a Wayne enterprises venture. That's right. <laughs> and so you do yeah, have yeah. to ask yourself, like, what was like, because he does later be like, that man was a crank. And like, he, you know, he, there, there was, he was making something bad there. What was the initial we... intention of that lab? Like, what were they actually trying to make? <laughs> what were you... Jeremy, they were, they were just trying to make super soldiers by experimenting on South American prisoners, okay? <laughs> we weren't going to sell it to anyone. Yeah, yeah we weren't going to we sell just... it to Gaddafi. We were going to sell it to the U.S. government. When we were done with it. <laughs> yeah, we're patriots. So... And, then, and, and then, like, Poison Ivy, like, she gets, like, a dose of her own, like, like sort of, I don't know, plant serum yeah, or whatever, whatever. And she it gets, makes she you gets, into a plant she gets plantified <laughs> and you know honestly like poison ivy in this movie like i think it needs to be addressed poison ivy is ecofash okay yes. she and is ecofash I'm, I'm not here for it she wants to she wants to get rid of people and make a world full of plants just like any any good liberal 90s movie yeah uh, you have to look anyone who thinks climate change is real like a fucking psycho <laughs> who wants to kill people and likes plants over people. Yeah, we're in real and ass also, fucking I, South Park hours here where yeah. uh, <laughs> where, where she's the eco fashion and everyone else is like, Batman will save us from climate change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Also, what I really like about, uh, you know, I mean, and, you know, basically for everyone involved in this movie, Schwarzenegger, Clooney, Uma Thurman, the, the, the widely regarded as this is the low points of all of their careers. Yes, for sure. <laughs> like, 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 and it's like, and all of them have very different, like, like higher bars for like what is good and bad, especially with Clooney and Thurman. But like, all of them reach a like unanimous low bar <laughs> with Batman and Robin. And like, but what I love about uh, Uma Thurman's performance as Poison Ivy is that she's so vampy. But like, when like it's sort of the origin story is the classic. Um, I didn't know you were hot until you took your glasses off. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, not only she takes her glasses off, but then like develops like a very like catty campy, like, like seductress vibe. Yeah. Like, before she's this befuddled sort of like lab tech, like, Oh, like, I don't know what's happening here. And then like, she gets that poison Ivy dose and she's like, come into my garden batman and sample my honey pot like it's just all very, <laughs> she's a fucking she drag so queen she, <laughs> she becomes so a drag queen horny. yes she does <laughs> it's incredibly horny but so she uh in the beginning scene uh mr freeze runs away and gets away um I don't know if he gets the diamond, but you find out that he does that get the diamond. He, he does gets get the, the diamond. diamond. He's in his lab. You find out that his wife has McGregor syndrome, and he's been keeping her uh, on ice, uh, and he's trying to make a cure for her. Um, also, we haven't mentioned, but immediately you see uh, Alfred just making weird faces in the corner uh, <laughs> a bunch of times. I was watching this with my boyfriend who had never seen it, um, and he was basically like, "What's going on with him? Why is he like?" <laughs> Is he annoyed well, all the time? He I does mean, what I, what not. I appreciate, do... Yeah, what I appreciate about Batman and Robin is that it does introduce as a plot point. It it, it brings it casts some. I mean, it dismisses it entirely by the end, mm -hmm. but it does introduce some doubt about whether this poor old man Alfred like actually does enjoy dedicating every waking moment <laughs> of his life to serving this insane rich man who he's like known since he was a child <laughs> right like for like well over like several decades of his life has been like pampering this fucking lunatic as he has a a mental breakdown and decides <laughs> to like d dedicate his resources to becoming like a sort of uh, a fetish vigilante <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that it, it is weirdly brought up and then immediately dropped yeah. that it's a weird thing for him to B and he's dying. So he's dying. <laughs> he's dying of, of McGregor's obviously or whatever. the same fictional disease that Mr. Freeze's wife. So their plan is let's have a gala because I'm a billionaire. This is this is the first movie I feel like of the first four, like the Tim Burton and Schumacher quadrilogy. Yeah. That th they really hammer home that he's a billionaire in a realistic way. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he's he's having like fucking he's like, well, I'll just have a I just have millions of dollars and I'm will invite all the rich people and that's how we can find 
Mr. Freeze. So that's their plan. They have a gala with a big diamond and they auction it off. And then Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze, uh, their plan was for Mr. Freeze to crash it, but Poison Ivy also cr- tra- crashes it. And you find out I in w- this scene <laughs> that Poison Ivy's power is that she can kill you with her kiss, but she's not allowed to kiss you unless you consent to it. Like the, the, <laughs> it's really bizarre because you know that she's going to murder a person, but she they're like get like this close, and she refuses to just like kiss them without their consent. Yeah. They have to want it. I don't understand why that's in the movie. <laughs> uh, Brittany, you make a you bring up a very good point, which is like in in this quadrilogy, starting with the Burton Batman stretching to Batman and Robin, mm-hmm. charity gala like black tie fundraisers play a huge part in like every one of those movies. Yes, mm-hmm. uh huh. And like I just I just the the poor catering staff at all these events <laughs> keep getting frozen, gassed. Uh, taken hostage you know? <laughs> yeah no one is no one ever cares about like, i mean it's like always the, assumed that they're okay i guess but and like you know in, in the in the keaton batman movies the the gala events had a, a kind of like yeah it was a sort of um like a more classical feel to them it was more uh that kind of like art deco style but then in the schumacher they just get insane yes they, they get, get full they become, on they become, epstein they become like raves yeah like epstein style <laughs> raves and, and i just want to point out poison ivy crashes the gala in a gorilla costume and right. then she hits it. She doses everyone with Molly and then yeah. does a strip tease <laughs> where she strips out of a gorilla costume. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it, does this make me horny? I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, it, it's it, it just ra- it raises a lot of questions. A lot of confusing my favorite thing, feelings. <laughs> my favorite thing about that scene, though, is she comes like out of the ceiling. Yeah. Um, she. Or, or she's in a gorilla costume, but before she like does the dust, and before she even comes out of the gorilla costume, everyone like whip turns to attention. <laughs> Everyone's like, "What is up with this gorilla?" <laughs> I, <laughs> I gotta pay attention to this. The music stops. The new music comes on. Everyone's like. All right, let's. I do very much sympathize with happening. this. I sympathize with this mindset. If I saw a giant gorilla person on stage, I'd definitely be like, "What's going on over right. there?" Because you're you're a gorilla mindset. That's your whole yeah, thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I also love the idea of the um, like the. the 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 mindset to like to have your your plot to uncover freeze be like we'll have a big gala where we'll be auctioning off a gigantic diamond it's like the uh <laughs> it's like the batman equivalent of when bugs bunny wears a dress to play on elmer fudd's horniness <laughs> <laughs> a, a crucial plot point though is that Mr. Freeze is stealing diamonds because his Mr. Freeze suit runs off diamonds. Yeah, it runs on diamonds. <laughs> it runs on diamonds and he just chucks it into it like it's a coal furnace or something. You know? He's like, ah, oh, more diamonds. Ah, uh, energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> diamond energy is makes like... Yeah, yeah. Which, if you're thinking about this from an engineering standpoint, you got to imagine that yeah. that's just because it's like a very compressed piece of carbon, so that you don't have to like have a huge oil tank on your back all the time. Yeah. I just like I just I felt so bad for Arnold because like this this is the most undignified role he's ever been in. It's just. I mean, he was in Jingle All the Way right after this. I, yeah, okay, but like he at least he looked like Arnold in that. That's he true. Yes. Like bizarre blue contacts and balls and like the a, whole time a Tonka toy fucking silver suit the entire <laughs> mech suit the entire movie, which he gets to keep yeah, in prison. <laughs> yeah, yes, he does at the end. Oh my god, yeah. You're right. So uh, the they crash the gala. Uh, Poison Ivy tries to kill um, Mr. Freeze with her 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 horny power, but uh, he's like, "Oh, that's that pheromone dust. That's to make a man's blood red hot." Yeah, but I don't have that, and it's yeah. like, I, "Oh, <laughs> sorry, baby, I, I'm Volsil." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, ice cold. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm I mean, I, I can't stress enough, like how, like just how hard they push uh, the puns for yeah. like really every character yeah. in this movie, but Mister Freeze essentially, and like the first two or three, like kind of makes sense, and then I remember like there's one scene where they, like Poison Ivy breaks Mister Freeze out of Arkham Asylum after Batman has caught him. And, like, to get out, he has to, like, freeze the pipes in the wall to, like, bust through it or whatever. Right, right. And right before he does that, he's like, don't forget to winterize your pipes. And I'm like, that's just reading out of, like, a, like this is saying things. Just like, he's like, yes, 
don't be Batman when you have your Batmobile. <laughs> Be on the lookout for black ice in certain <laughs> weather conditions. He does make sure he miss a black ice. Or windows. <laughs> yeah, it's just. <laughs> He's just saying things. And it's, it's it's really it's really good. Well, what's fascinating too is is their insistence on putting puns everywhere, but never giving a single one to Robin, who f- like was famous for his puns in in the Adam West Batman. Right, he was the big. Uh, yeah, like the holy rusted what? metal Batman. Like, the, yeah, 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 exactly. He never gets to uh, say anything like that because they, for whatever reason, they insist on the idea that Robin should be cool and hot. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's classic heartthrob christopher o'donnell <laughs> who he was everyone... like the, he was a 90s punk like he, i mean he i was thought he was cute at the time but he was never like he never re- reached the highs of like you know jgt he was mm. never like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean he wasn't like a big heart. he was like kind of the a secondary like he was only in that other movie mad love and what the bachelor yeah this actually probably yeah, ruined he was him, incentive it seems. a woman he, oh, okay. he was he was the he was the the nephew in Scent of a Woman. Oh, right. he was in Kinsey. Um, oh yeah, he is in Kinsey, which I like. I, you said you said Robin didn't have any one liners, but he he had one. I don't know if it counts as a one liner, but I definitely wrote it down. And this is when uh, him and Batman have been both dosed with horniness dust, and like they're <laughs> fighting over who Poison Ivy likes more. And right. he's like, ah, you wouldn't let her kiss me because you know you got to have her all for yourself. And she like yeah. she she's in love with me, not you. And and like George George Clooney Batman is like you know oh like she'll she'll kill you with her kiss she has she has a po- she has poison lips and then Robin just goes um, poison kiss you've got some real issues with women bro <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this movie also gets into weird like it's like the very beginning of like nineties early two thousands like girl power feminism mm-hmm. oh yeah. So right after this, I think uh, Alicia Silverstone is Alfred's niece? grandniece or something, yeah. and yeah, something uh, like she shows up. They've never heard of her, but she's apparently <laughs> real close, and she's like, "Hey, I'm hanging out at this mansion now. Uh, I'm staying here." It's barely it's barely touched on. They just gloss over. It's like, well, she's family, sure, yeah, whatever. Um, and then every night she steals a motorcycle and leaves, and that happens three times before it's ever matters <laughs> finally yeah. robin uh decides to follow her and she's um riding motorcycles for money she's racing she, yeah she's doing fast and furious style drag racing um in the streets of gotham with like a sort of menagerie of all of gotham's uh, most frightening and terrifying criminal gangs yeah. like mm-hmm. the, there's the glow in the dark gang <laughs> there's the uh the trash gang. There's the uh, we dress like uh, the droogs from Clockwork Orange. Gang. Yeah. Oh I don't yeah. Know if you guys caught this, but the guy who's like like running the illegal street race mm-hmm. is a cameo by Coolio. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was gonna say Coolio. That's how, 90, that's how 90s this movie is. Is oh, that yeah. Coolio is in it? So he's just straight up in it as a guy who's the bookie. So w- <laughs> yeah. one of the things that we keep touching on is this idea of this as kind of like a low point for Batman and a low point for all these people's careers and like the end of this era of superhero movies. There was a planned sequel to this. Really? They were going to make a sequel to this. Warner Brothers apparently like loved what they were seeing in the dailies as they were coming in and they're like <laughs> they were like this cha ching, we are taking this thing all the way to the top. And so they planned to make Batman a whole ass sequel. Robin and Batgirl? Huh? That was what was it gonna be called? Batman and Robin and Batgirl. It was going to be called <laughs> Batman Unchained. Ooh. Oh wow! Fully right. <laughs> That's oh the God. horniest title yeah. it could possibly Very have. Very funny to 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 think of as literally just Django Unchained, but with Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was gonna. The reason I thought of it is because it was gonna be Coolio was gonna play um, uh, the Scarecrow. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Wow! God so, damn it! What, what we were, this is what they took from us. <laughs> this is what they. This is what they. Look what they did to us. my boy Coolio. Could have had Look a longer yeah. career. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I don't know, but like, uh, it just um, the the horniness is very important because th- this Batman quadrilogy, <laughs> as compared right. to the Christopher Nolan uh, and the Zack Snyder Batman movies, is that the huge difference? Everyone says, "Oh, it's like it's the it's gr- one is gritty and the other isn't." Like like the original ones sort of tried to like look and seem more like an actual comic book in that like you know the the look of gotham city like like the the sort of the ridiculousness of it like, like tim burton and joel schumacher 
like wanted the movie to look as sort of like cartoonish, like or just a certain like hyper yeah stylized vision that like would sort of like look a little bit like a comic book, right. and then like Nolan was like, no, what if Batman was real <laughs> in, in the world we live in right now? It's not that the big dividing line is horniness because even in the <laughs> even in, even in the Tim Burton Batman movies they are astonishingly horny yes. like Bruce Wayne Batman mm-hmm. the Joker Penguin Catwoman are inc- they are just everyone is just in, they're just torqued constantly yeah. they they, they, want <laughs> they to all want to fuck each other they, they all want to and actually do fuck that's Where true it's just like it's just Oh, superhero movies are totally sexless now. Like they're completely like they're, it's everyone's neutered. They're like action. Figures. Yeah, the Nolan Batman. Whereas, like these ones were really like, yeah, no, this is a fetish for these people. Like this is a kink. Like crime fighting is or doing crimes is like totally secondary <laughs> to just scratching some it's a l- libido for her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and Mr. Freeze is entirely driven by just getting his wife back. And he's obviously yeah, a Volcel now, so that's yeah. the whole reason. He just wants to fuck his his he's a trad guy. He's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a trad ice guy. Um and so so we haven't really even talked about Batman, who's barely in the movie, it feels like, or he's just like not he's present. Yeah. Yeah. Um he he basically George Clooney is I have to say the worst Batman, like by far. And I yeah. feel yeah. like it's not his fault. It's everyone else's fault but he he just has nothing to do in this movie he's just like he wants to fuck poison ivy for like a scene and then realizes that she's the villain and will kill her um and robin is like nope gotta fuck i gotta get it <laughs> I gotta in, get it in. <laughs> <laughs> and and the anything you do to stop me from fucking uh is betrayal yeah, it's on and- site my dude <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the main conflict of the movie yeah. is that well, they, they, they introduced this like this 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 completely undeveloped subplot where Elle McPherson plays Bruce Wayne's girlfriend who's oh, like, yeah. they've, they've been they've been going steady and she's in like two scenes and then like it's just one of them she's like hey are you gonna marry me and he's like no and that's it <laughs> and then she that's never it. comes back uh, there's a, there's... She, she's never like she's never taken hostage by like the villain she's never in any peril she just sort of shows up and has like dinner with him once <laughs> and like and that's it yeah it's they forgotten. don't even they don't even she... use her as like a a you know, some sort of dangling female yeah, exactly. like object. She's nothing. Yeah. It doesn't well, and, even matter. The funny thing is like the way he treats her in this movie is that even if they, I think they, they knew on some level that like if, if, if like poison Ivy or Bane or someone was like, yeah, you know, dangling her off a skyscraper and he had like a choice to like, Oh, you know, do I save the city or this girl? Like he would, it wouldn't even have to be like those things. He'd be like, do I get a sandwich or save this girl? And he would definitely be like, oh, fuck it. Who cares? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's, I think the problem is, is that there's too many women in the movie and they were like, well, we've got the good woman who's Batgirl and we've got the bad woman who is uh, Poison Ivy. So what, why did we write this character? <laughs> I don't know what to do with her. So they just stopped there's writing a, her. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's another there's another female role in this movie. And I'm just like, you know, it, it's never been touched on before, but I'm so glad we finally got some, you know, uh, a character beloved in like the DC comic universe finally got their due. I'm referring, of course, to Gossip Gertie. Gossip, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gossip Con. <laughs> And she she gets a quite she gets more burn than Elle McPherson in this movie. She's like That's it's true. gossip Gertie, everybody. I'm here with <laughs> Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Gotham's most yeah. eligible bachelor, and like oh, yeah. person is standing right next to him. She's like, "Wait, Bruce, what, wait, what are you talking about?" <laughs> I'm not a bachelor. Yeah, yeah that would have been a good opportunity We've to been have together uh, for years. It would have been a good opportunity to have seeded in some of the some of the gay uh, element that we were missing from this movie could have been maybe like yeah. uh well, you know she's like bruce you've been going steady with her for for so many years when are you gonna tie the knot and then like it cuts over to like robin <laughs> off to the side just seething <laughs> <laughs> just like turning away and getting on his motorcycle and crying <laughs> um yeah. yeah so that it's weird i don't understand why this is even in the movie. Like we would, the movie would not be any different if she just wasn't in the movie. Um, so Robin f- helps uh, Batgirl with the, f- with the race. And then uh, shit, what happens? 
Um, basically, they find out that she's bad girl or something. Like she just decides no, no, she she's going to be bad herself. girl. No, what happens is that like Alfred's dying, and, <laughs> right. and bad girl. You find that uh, out. It, like it, he, she introduces like this idea that like um, I'm. I she's like I've come back and like I've, I'm going to take all the money that I've won doing motorcycle races. And I'm going to give it to Alfred to liberate him from his life of demeaning servitude to this rich oh, pervert. Yeah. She's going to buy. She's, she's going to buy, buy Alfred's, Alfred's freedom, freedom from Bruce Wayne, <laughs> which is and how then, it like, works. There's a great scene where she's where she's telling Robin this, and he like doesn't get it. He's like, "What are you talking about? Alfred's happy. We treat him like one of the family." <laughs> and she's like, he's hobbled over and just sort of like like wheezing as he brings a tray of like meat into the bat cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I want to stop here and mention that this movie really like I feel like it's almost it's trite in a certain way to mention that Batman is a insane billionaire who dis- he's just Jeff Bezos if Jeff Bezos went around murdering people, um, right? And I, I I understand that it's a it's a and people are like well it's just a comic or it's just it's not it doesn't matter but it's like this movie makes it really really clear that <laughs> he's a terrible person but thinks that it's cool <laughs> like that 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 this whole system is bad and that it's cool that it's bad <laughs> because they they present you with that and then it's just like actually no he is happy <laughs> <laughs> no yeah like exactly like alfred is fine with all this like he's just like oh after they uh you know spoiler alert they save his life from mcgregor's disease or mr freeze does because he yeah. feels good at the end but like basically what happens <laughs> is that, like as he's dying like he get, like in in his sort of like uh dementia stupor uh, he's on he's on that joe biden shit and he like <laughs> talks to alicia silverstone <laughs> like he's like or like her mother or something or like she's like you have to give this to my brother like he has to fulfill my duties if i die and he gives her like the hard disk that will like unlock all of batman's secrets <laughs> yeah and i really love this one detail where it takes alicia silverstone about four seconds of sitting at a desk trying different passwords till she finds out that alfred has encrypted like the crown jewels yes. of like all of batman's secrets <laughs> with a password that is peg yes it's a three-letter <laughs> password it's like her mother's name oh like, god yeah Fucking no one can figure that one out, dude. Thanks a dude, lot. Dude, and so at this point... You <laughs> an exclamation point in there, man. The, what the fuck? The, the, the horniness <laughs> level of the movie is so off the charts by this point, too, that as I'm watching it and I'm watching her, like, try different... Like, it's all women's names and, like, she tries, like, attire or something like that. She's like, Alfred dresses fancy. Maybe it's attire. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then the the one that wins is Peg, and I was just picturing <laughs> she enters the Alfred password, and it's just a video of him just getting railed out. <laughs> <laughs> that was his final yeah. move. Yeah. Is like this is part yeah. of it for me, <laughs> drifting away to die. <laughs> no, but here's the amazing thing: it's like so, like she she gets access to the Bat Cave, and then she walks down there. And like the bat computer is like, hello, I am Alfred. I've uploaded my brain into this <laughs> algorithm so that even after my death, I can continue to serve you forever. You're quite good at turning yeah, me on. Exactly. That's the way. Hi, Bruce. Yeah. You're really and, and good then, at it. <laughs> yeah. And then like, but, but then like Alfred, I guess in one of his lucid moments has like already created a bat girl costume for right. his niece yeah. or whatever. So she's just ready to go. And like she just she just becomes Batgirl, and then at the climax she just shows up, and she's like, "Hey, it's Batgirl," and then she goes, uh, "It's me, Barbara." And they're like, "Oh no, shit! We didn't <laughs> notice." You were just like, "All you have is just this little like like little visor over your eyes." Right? Yeah, and also it's all the shit that's been in your cave. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah exactly. you're Batman, so you know where it actually came from. And there's only one woman <laughs> who's even been in your house. <laughs> You've got. T- it's a 50 50 shot between l and barbara <laughs> uh, it's insane um i just uh, i just have i just have in my notes here another arnold one-liner that happens around this point in the plot where it's just like okay he, he's going up on the climax and he's going to use the uh uh the wayne industries observatory like telescopic lens and satellite network he's going to like turn that into his ice ray gun right. and freeze all of gossam with his big like his big ice ray and he's like i I'm, don't I'm, I'm, Remember I'm why he wants free- to do that. 
Oh, because... Uh, because he believes that Batman and Robin killed his wife, right. and then he's just like, ah, I, I can't have the warmth of my wife. Everyone yeah, at some point, um, yeah, right. at some point, Poison Ivy decides Poison that Ivy's she has to kill the wife. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, Poison Ivy does it because she's like, I've never been good at playing second fiddle. Or, like, I don't like another woman in the picture. Like, <laughs> she just does her her vamp act, and like she wants. Mr. Freeze to freeze the world so that, that she could be like that she can do her eco fash project of making it like gr- greening the planet again, I suppose, after the ice thaws out. Like, you know, anyway, okay. she just wants to kill everybody. Um, and then right by like as as Freeze is unlo- on lo- you know, sort of um, preparing for his his master plan, this, this his final stroke of revenge against the world. He goes, if revenge is a dish best served cold, then put on your Sunday finest. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Like, they, what? 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 Is, it's not about dressing. Yeah. It's like, it's just one How about just, this just is a buffet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That would work. <laughs> if revenge is a dish best or cold, then uh, this is Baskin Robbins. I don't know. Then I'd better <laughs> unbutton my top button because yeah. I've had <laughs> yeah. a lot of revenge. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like Bryn, what you were saying about how, like, uh, you know, it, even if it doesn't want to, it does reveal all the. Uh, uh, the, the 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 evil of Bruce Wayne and his his billions and his uh, his rotten social conscience because like yeah. you know in, in in addition to spending all that money creating a bat zamboni which is <laughs> debuted at the end of this movie uh, like the other big like charitable oh, effort yeah. that he did for Gotham City was build like a giant like observ- like observatory it's like which is stars and shit which is i guess cool but like you know how about how about some housing buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh I will say, though, that one of the coolest things about this whole movie is all of the uh, structures, like all of the architecture in this movie Uh is like all of it was designed by Howard Rourke. Yes, it's (laughs) it's entirely Anne Randian. It's like skyscraper sized buff naked men like holding buildings yeah. <laughs> and the coolest part of the movie is like they there's like a hand that they like launch off of like the three different fingers yeah, yeah. right um and i think that's near the beginning of the movie but yeah, some a- of that stuff looks awesome um and if there's any reason to watch this movie it's that i think i was gonna it's say minimal, the, action but it's sequ- cool. the action sequences in this movie are like they just jumped ahead in time and adapted the action that would be in the Nintendo 64 video game <laughs> adaptation of this movie and just made those in like that was the, the movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because like that, what would fit and be fun to play is like what's yeah, in the exactly. movie. It's not fun like, to like, watch. No. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But like you can see like obstacle approaching, like hit, hit X to jump. Like <laughs> the, yeah. the the physics utterly bizarre. Oh, it's so weird. Every single action it's scene, so, they like, like they all yeah. take these weird when they jump and fly and stuff, they take these weird like knuckleball trajectories where they just kind of- <laughs> Yeah, it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I was trying to think of something to describe like like the physics of how people's bodies react in these action scenes. And like, yeah, it, it's a knuckleball physics. And the, I, okay, there's one there's one thing that really stuck out for me. Like and also like how 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 much a human being weighs very dramatically because <laughs> sometimes they'll get like they'll get punched or thrown and they'll like just fly away like a tennis ball that was just hit or something it's like and a nightmare scene on where uh where robin he gets he gets blasted with the freeze gun and turned into like a block of ice and yeah. like and then and then batman just picks up his whole body like a like a piece of luggage yeah. and carries it and it looks like his whole body weighs about 50 pounds <laughs> he just carries that's frozen robin like and there's a little handle on it and just dunks him in like a hot bath <laughs> and then he's like did we win did we get yeah. him uh yeah so and then i guess there's a big la- final standoff at this point the movie it really takes a hard turn at the end because it's like okay the final standoff and you're just like what is yeah, happening what are the stakes why is here? it well, who <laughs> cares <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess like, I'd, I'd forgotten that like Poison Ivy had been like defeated. I was like, well, where did she go? Yeah, and then she's right. like, oh, she's just in Arkham at the and end. Like, of the movie. why was oh, Bane right. like, in like, this movie at all? <laughs> yes, Bane is in this movie, and uh, my favorite thing with, 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 with this version of Bane 
is that he's essentially just like Hulk uh-huh. in a gimp mask, but like he has this like 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 a like a bendy straw connecting his brain to the bimbo juice, yes. and to defeat him, all they have to do is just pull this like tube out of the back of his head very easily. And I was like, ma- major design flaw with this super soldier. Dude, the, the fucking the gimp mask is so funny too because the scene where they make Bane is like way 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 back at the beginning you know they're like plugging him into the juice machine and whatever and he's like all right stand back everybody and he just puts a gimp mask on him for no reason <laughs> yeah, 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 it's another yeah. like it's just a weird horny <laughs> detail where they're like yeah why not yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh okay so i remembered what happens uh they robin is like fuck you batman i'm gonna get my dick wet in this fucking plant yes. lady yes and but he goes there and he's like, all right. <laughs> this is so good. I totally want you. We're definitely going to smang. But I got to know, what is your plan for, you know, are you, are you, are you really a bad person? <laughs> and she's like, kiss me first. And he's like, tell me first and I'll kiss you. And she's like, all right, we're going to kill everyone. And he's like, interesting. <laughs> And then he uh, he's like, all right, well, I promise is a promise. And so they kiss and she's like, bad news, I'm afraid you're actually about to die. And he's like, but I have rubber lips, yes, <laughs> which apparently <laughs> yes. saves you. So and good. then he like he, he, he put contact cement over his lips yeah, and then good. kissed her and was just like. No, and then, and then I, I had to write this line down because it is just such a brilliant piece of writing. Mm-hmm. His big his big comeback to Poison Ivy where she's like, well, why aren't you dying? As he goes, he peels off his lips and then goes, rubber lips are immune to your charms. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> That, like, like that a line pun. was like th- that line was written by like a Japanese video game or just like the hu- the human manifestation of cocaine, like someone who had just done so much cocaine that they've become like just a rock. <laughs> yeah, it really reminds me of like being on like snorting caffeine pills and Adderall at the same time, and you're like, it is five a.m. right now. <laughs> And the paper is due at 8 a.m. And I still have to have time to print it. So here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. it, well, it feels like come down writing where you're just like, yeah. you're, on the, you're on the back end now. And you're just like, and fuck he it, says fuck this. It, fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> sure. Rubber well, lips are, are immune to your charm. So instead of, okay, they are inches away from each other's face. He takes off his fake yes. lips. And she's like, and he says, rubber lips are immune to your charms. And instead of just leaning in a little and kissing him again, she pushes him into water. Yeah, darn, thwarted. And, <laughs> and then Batgirl shows up, and because it's uh, 1997's feminism, she's like, I will beat up the woman. And then she kicks her ass, and then she falls into her chair, and then it, like, folds, yeah, and, that's and that's her it, ending. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's it. it. She like, she's like, oh, no, I'm caught in a chair, and then that's, that's it. it. Uh, also <laughs> worth I'm noting... I'm caught in my plant chair, yeah. Uh, during the fight... Uh, uh, Batgirl has a whole monologue about how, like, you're using horniness uh, to to gain power, and you give women a bad name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, uh, I think she even says something like, "It's the '90s." Yeah, <laughs> it feels like it. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just like letting, cluing you in in case you were wondering what decade this produced this fucking movie. But they were like, yeah, like wait, wait to be passive aggressive, and like I love that she's like. Alicia Silverstone in a skin tight black latex <laughs> bat girl costume is like, ah, using sexuality to appeal to men? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, you're canceled, sis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the. Uh, we won't, we shan't be having it, ma'am. That's what the liquid was. It was tea. Yeah. <laughs> I simply yeah. will not be taking it. Um, and, and it's so, like, you know, I, I don't know about Chris O'Donnell, but like, Alicia Silverstone was like the babe of all babes. Oh, like, yeah. Of the uh-huh. 90s. Like, we're like, at, Way more than Arrow, Uma Thurman. Arrowsmith videos were like, oh, yeah, forget it. Like, from that on, like. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Freeze, meanwhile, they find out she's Batgirl, and they're like, cool, we'll have to kill you. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. You're a part of our team now. Yeah. <laughs> We've known you for all of three hours. Um, and so they uh, are like, okay, well, Mr. Freeze is trying to freeze the whole city. He basically does it. That's the weirdest thing about this is that he's just like, I'm going to freeze the whole city. And then he does it. <laughs> and they're like, he has to freeze Dang. the whole city. But crucially, and they set this up early in the movie, 
once he hits you with the freeze gun and you have a block of ice, oh, you, have you become s- a block. But you have exactly 11 minutes before you die. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so just start that count. Start that clock. You know, 1059, you're okay. 1101, bye-bye. <laughs> you're you're blocked. Forever, yeah. all people it doesn't matter how old or frail or sick yeah. or yeah. immune yeah no it changes. doesn't matter it's like the uh it's like the, the exploding palm technique from kill bill that's doesn't right. matter <laughs> all conditions are the same <laughs> five mm-hmm. steps so they he they do it but what do you know it uh ele- before 11 minutes they unfreeze everybody and then you get a nice little like insert shots of like random gotham people who are just like wow that was crazy i'm covered in ice now and then a bulldog like shakes off all the ice only and then- in gotham baby only in gotham. <laughs> the greatest city in the world <laughs> 27 yeah. rings bro <laughs> yeah. uh and so they uh yeah and then they're done and then mr freeze is on the ground they kicked they kicked him dead somehow and he's like dying and he's all hot because they they use like a mirror to like they as a big magnifying mirrors to steal to steal sunlight from um, the, uh, the uh, African Congo from the, that's uh, right yeah, the, and they're, they're stealing Africa's sunlight to, to thaw out <laughs> Gotham. Just another billionaire using yeah, imperialism. Exactly. Well, yeah, um, actually, Wayne Wayne Industries actually uh, its original fortune was made in rubber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they were a big fruit company, uh, but you know it's interesting uh, because we said they uh, Miss Poison Ivy's lab was funded by Wayne Industries. Never mentioned again. Yeah. This is the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and so he's like, "Listen, I found out what was going on." He says this to Mister Freeze. Batman's like, "I found out what's going on." I know all you want is to bring your wife back. I think you got a good heart. I know it's frozen or whatever, but we can thaw it out and uh, you can help me. I'll help you. We'll scratch each other's backs. Um, We'll both benefit off of the terror that you've been doing. uh, And that'll be good. And then I'll set your lab up in jail because you're going to jail. (laughs) Uh, But I also need that thing. And so he opens a little thing in his arm and he says, take two of these and call me in the morning. Oh yeah, well because he a calls pun. him doctor because Bruce calls him doctor. He is yeah. a doctor, but but no, but specifically instead of being like freeze, he goes like doctor, doctor Victor von Freeze, because <laughs> that's his name. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, um, like uh, so, Mister Freeze actually like he becomes a good guy at the end, and you know I, I like that you know because it's just like women are the real enemy, and like right. we must we must unite. <laughs> <laughs> to fight them because like they're making us horny with their dust and whatnot. So, like you know, they're they're just out to kill yeah, you. Yeah, women and their right. fucking dust. Stay strong, kids. <laughs> and the only good ones are uh, not like other girls. Exactly. They they, they, they ride they motorcycles and they cool. yeah <laughs> try to save their their <laughs> uncle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They steal from rich people. You know, they try to they try to liberate their uncles from indentured servitude, yeah. but then give mm-hmm. up on that when they're like, "Oh, he's happy doing." Right. Poison Ivy I'm, is the Sadie Doyle of this movie. She's like a fake gamer girl is what it is. Because yeah. she like tries to present herself as this like fun environmentalist, but then when you get down to it, what is she doing? Horny dust. Yeah. It's just yeah, no, also, I mean, like po- po- Poison yeah. Ivy is just she makes us realize that like we all just want like a glam goth eco fash GF. You know? <laughs> yeah, that feel when that no feel when. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. So he gives them the cure, and then it's like they go back home to their enormous mansion, and they put these little things in his IV, and then like hours later, he's like not dying anymore. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> master the, way, <laughs> 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 fucking moonwalking. <laughs> would you like me to? Would you like? Would you like me to prepare a meal for you from scratch yeah. for all of you? <laughs> this is the only thing. Like, this is my life. Meeting. Are we done with you. these dishes? <laughs> Yeah, that's literally what happens, and then it's over. <laughs> and then, and then Barbara's just like, "Well, you know what? Now that I realize I can have cool, uh, you know, warrior tech, and we can all just live in the same house together and uh, not fuck ever, <laughs> um, it's fine actually, and it's okay that you have my uh, grandfather as a servant or whatever." And then it's over. That's the, the end. end. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> Batman and Robin, ladies and wow. gentlemen. I gotta say, watching this movie, 
like it, it was honestly it, like it was not painful to get through. Like it was two hours long, but it, I did not feel the length at yeah. all. It, like it, it, it just it flew by. It was breezy. It, it was, does. It, it, it was funny. It was like it was it was insane enough to like it was it was insane and bad enough to be to be funny. Um, which I really appreciate. Yeah. I was not expecting that because yeah. I remember seeing this movie in theaters as a kid. Um, I think I was 11 when this movie came out and um, I didn't like it. Like I was 11 oh, years old it. and I, I loved, I loved Batman forever. Yes, I loved Batman forever. Yeah, me so too. Much. Me too. I, I, yeah. And I remember I was going to looking s- forward to this one. <laughs> I remember going to see this with a crush of mine um, and it was like, uh, we were just looking at each other the whole movie like, this is sucks, right? Like, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, though? Because I was a child. I didn't know why. Yeah. And, but uh, now, I, so I was expecting it to just be Batman Forever, but boring. But it's not. It's Batman Forever, but insane. Right. <laughs> Even more so and funnier. Well, it's... It's um, like you know, like to compare that to like like another, like another movie of the I think it came out the same year. Like the, the, as I mentioned in the beginning, the Roland Emmerich Godzilla movie, which is just yeah. like is miserable. It's like it's it's, it's joyless. It is yeah. a a slog to get through. Like I felt every although it's, like, notably the last third when they uh, fun soundtrack when they introduced the baby. Yeah, oh yeah, great soundtrack. <laughs> but uh, just especially the last third of the movie when they introduced the baby Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. like, I felt like I felt like every second of it, I felt. <laughs> It was like a Chinese water torture just <laughs> dripping on my forehead. Well, it was like with this one, it's like it, it honestly it, it is so campy and absurd throughout the entire thing that it actually sort of holds together. Like it, 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 it it's a coherent, like fun movie to watch. Um, I'm going to disagree with you there. I okay. think that it does fall apart by the by the final like after he kisses poison ivy and then everything after that is basically boring to me i was just like i started spacing out and being yeah. like wait what are the what is this part the whole ending i really didn't like <laughs> but i was very i don't know i mean i wasn't pleasantly surprised this is a terrible movie let's be clear oh it's, all, oh, it's abominable <laughs> it's, but it's like, terrible but it is kind of fun it, 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 it's just it, yeah it's it, like to me like to me it's like the movie never cohered at any point so if it, was, it wasn't like I like I I yeah. always had some jarring like switch in tone where it's like oh it's really dragging now it's like at no point did any of it make sense <laughs> at all so like I, I, I but 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 it was it always was ridic- like uh, like it never stopped being like fucking like ridiculous and that's insane. true it does like, it, keep it, itself to a standard of being <laughs> absurd and never trying to make any sense yeah. But I really do fucking hate that they try and like put in this weird stuff where they're like, me and Alfred, we're family. And I feel like <laughs> Alfred's I feel dying. Like, I feel like the thing about this movie is that it, it was the death knell of this kind of movie, but also like a weird like back echo of everything that would come of like like uh just like moral free ideological ide- ideology free sort of like absurdity that like has be- has taken over the MCU mm-hmm. do you know what i mean yeah. where it's just like loud fucking colors just absurd spectacle uh liberal id poll just like everything is like echoed in this movie forward and it's like it died and then was reborn as something much more palatable and much more insidious. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because like, like, but the the, cru- the, the crucial dis- distinction though is like the Marvel movies, like, it, like all of that, like you know, um, sort of like colorful, just miasma of just sort of brain melting, like you know, gruel. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sort of vaguely pleasant, but not nourishing is all yeah. done with just gigantic, like green screen studios and CGI. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas like in this, they like, they really built like every one of these insane sets. Like we're, we're like I said, we're Batman and Robin fight a hockey team. Like they like, <laughs> and that's just the set they're running around. Right. On. Like It's not like they're flying all around and they're shooting lasers and shit. Like it's just, like I said, like this movie is like if someone gave the Adam West Batman TV series a hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah. But like had in nineteen ninety seven money. Like had that same <laughs> level of special effects from the sixties. They just had a hundred million dollars to do it. Yeah, because it seems like it's a fucking like um 
like high school play sometimes like there's shots yes, where yes. it's just like this is so clearly a set they don't care at all like they're not yeah. interested and then like i said there's stuff with the buildings that looks insane like there's no other like i was honestly looking at it and being like that's awesome that looks fantastic um and there's a the 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 scene that i think uh there's one shot that really encapsulates the way this movie looks to me which is like a a shot of poison ivy when she's got glasses on um later it's like almost in the middle end of the movie right before she gets killed she does it to the commissioner who's like a fat bumbling moron commissioner gordon is like a big dumbass in this movie yeah. and she like turns around and it's like a close-up and it's beautiful looking and she like goes like this and puts her hand in front of her face and then blows and like it looks awesome it's a great shot and it's like really well composed and it it looks cool and then this dumb like 90s cgi pink like trail <laughs> comes off of it and completely ruins it <laughs> so that's kind of how like how that's an encapsulation of what the movie looks like i think so yeah i don't know would you recommend it yeah yeah i would i mean yeah just fuck yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah this is a good movie to like it's a good movie to watch and like make fun of along with it and just laugh at like like every every like the, just like it's a movie that's entertaining to watch and like consider the fact like try to tally up in your head how many distinct individuals had to say yes to like every single decision that was made to produce this movie <laughs> you know and like it's just like that, that it's, it's fascinating like like through that lens like, oh yeah yeah they're trying to ride this shit all the way to the top and this was the top and then like jeremy like you said the fact that like warner brothers apparently was seeing dailies from this movie being like yes <laughs> yes this is gonna run around give we us need, like, more like, we need the bat family is gonna go forever it's gonna be Clooney, o'donnell <laughs> silverstone they're gonna just like they're gonna rule the marquee for years to come we've got yeah, we need a contract younger robin for seven now. more movies <laughs> yeah 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 it's pretty crazy and i think it it really encapsulates a lot of what like was weird about the 90s um until i guess spider-man in 2002 yeah. um when 9-11 happened and then it was just a mess <laughs> spider yeah. mo superhero movies were a mess until until nolan i guess and then it was like now we live in a terrible world well the interesting thing about the sam raimi spider-man movies is that he was really it, it was post 9-11, and I remember, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Bare, the, very first, only kind the very first trailer, <laughs> yeah, the very first trailer for the Spider-Man movie when it was released, it was this like sizzle reel teaser of like a bank robbery, and then they flee in a helicopter, and yeah. then the helicopter gets caught in spider webs between the two twin towers. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and they, had to, like, happened... they had to edit that out of the movie, yeah. That Sucks. happened like in fucking like 2001 August. Yeah. <laughs> that that trailer came out and then like weeks later it was like well we're pulling that teaser <laughs> <laughs> they were put, throwing the yeah. knock down the memory <laughs> hole but like what i was saying is like what's interesting is that like you know like i guess they kind of had to be fraught with this kind of like well you know uh we're turning to superheroes now is this kind of like um childhood like idealized like version of like what does it mean to be a hero now like yeah you know, now like the with we, you know the firemen are the heroes but like Interestingly, like the Spider, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies had that like goofy, really goofy look of a comic strip, and like you know, everyone's costumes are like very bright colors, and like Green Goblin's whole fucking getup was just like so funny. Yeah, it was just like this bright <laughs> green, yeah. like villain. samurai mask, and but like it's really just like Willem Dafoe's voice and presence that's selling the character. But like they like Raimi was still very much like adhering to like the newspaper strip like goofy like friendly neighborhood peter parker like kid from queens spider-man where it's just like half of the stuff he's doing is just like you know like uh saving people from muggers and like getting cats mm -hmm. out of trees and stuff like that you know totally. it, was, it was like it was this this stab at like oh like you know uh like what what do heroes mean now in this like post 9 11 world in new york city but mm -hmm. also incredibly goofy and comic like as well and then right. Nolan comes along and completely changes it. And they're like, oh, superheroes are serious. Like, what if Batman was real? Like I was saying, which is like the dumbest question you can ask <laughs> of, like, of the superhero genre. It's like, oh, you know, you know what this genre needs? Like more realism or just like, oh, what, what if this actually existed in our world right now? Right. But also not changing the perspective of it at all like it's like yeah. politically still exactly the same completely neutral ignore everything but 
but what if it was what what if he could get hurt <laughs> like what if he was sad yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean if anything politically the nolan movies are like more, more reactionary than like, oh yeah because you know, okay, they're like you know hey uh we, yeah we we need like a like omnipresent like security state but like run by the right people or like someone who's yeah. like a sort of like a like a has a like a, a, a sort of like Tory like stoicism. I think that was the message of those movies. <laughs> yeah. And dark Knight, the, the dark Knight, the whole point of the movie is like, we have to fool the entire populace. Um, we have to have this like small cabal at the top, but we just can't tell them because that's not how it works. And we all have to understand that sometimes, you know, commissioner Gordon and Batman have to do bad things. They just have like, to understand. Yeah. Like some, sometimes like you have to like warrantlessly spy on everyone and then like yeah. torture people. And shit. Yeah. But like, it's but you're willing insane. to be, but you're willing to be hated for it to keep everyone safe is the message of that. And like, it's basically like, yes, George W. Bush is Batman. Thank you everybody. Yeah. yeah isn't it's that like, kind of brave? it's like Nancy Pelosi wrote the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's been Batman and Robin. Thank you so much, Will Meneker, for coming on the show. It's been great to have you. Would you like to plug anything? Uh, you know, I just follow you, follow your boy on Twitter. Follow me on Letterboxd. Yeah, get, follow me on the movie plug. <laughs> Check me out on Letterboxd if you're follow looking for up. more more Meneker mindset movie recommendations. <laughs> follow <laughs> us all on Letterboxd. You're just Will at Will Meneker, right? Yeah, I'm just, just search for Will Meneker. It'll come up. Yeah, I'm also Kinematography on there. Jeremy does not like Letterboxd because he hates writing. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I, I understand. Hey, reading that. too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Also, uh, listen to uh Will Menneker's podcast, uh, Vanderpod. Yes. And, if, it, uh, if it ever comes back, you know, I, I promise we'll do another episode eventually. After yeah. the season is like long over, the we'll cult like, hey, it's hit a TV recap show where you do it six months after you watch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then follow me and Jeremy on Twitter, uh, Kinematography, Jeremy Thunder. Follow the show at Gen Loss Pod. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash generation loss. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. No!